Morning, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well this morning. Just uh, hanging out at the house here. Have the house to myself today. So doing a little bit of work from home and thought it would be a great spot to start our, our morning together. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome. Hey, as you join us, hit that share button and that helps people know what's going on. So good morning, good morning. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Hope you've been having a good morning so far. I started out the day with a good workout. Got the, the protein smoothie going right now. Prep for morning devotions and here we are. So it's good to see everybody. And as you join us, let me know, if you were famous, what would you be famous for? If you were famous, what would you be famous for? Um, if I was famous, and I don't necessarily want to be, okay, there's some, some stuff that comes along with that, obviously. But if I was, I, I'd probably want to be famous for guitar. I just, it's a huge passion. Just love guitar. I think it'd be awesome to just be able to play like whatever you wanted. It'd be amazing to have that much skill. So if I were famous, that's what I'd want to be famous for. And water skiing, Fred, that's cool. That's cool. That'd be pretty legit. If you were going to be famous, what would you be famous for? Famous for investment management, Jake. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Anybody else? If you were famous, what would you be famous for? For talking. Karen, you're already famous for that. Just kidding. Karen's very good at talking. She's very articulate. Good morning, everybody. All right, we'll, we'll get started and you can still answer. Ha, Joan, you're too nice. Evangelism, nice. Hiking, interior design remodeling. Yeah, you could have your own show, huh, Kathy? All right. Growing beautiful flowers. Kindness. Some good answers. Hey, if you're just joining us, uh, please share so people know what's going on. Hit the share button. And we're in Acts 16 today. Yesterday, Pastor Lance read about the Macedonian call in verses 6 to 10. So today we're going to start at verse 11, the conversion of Lydia. And I'm in the ESV, English Standard Version. So here we go. Here's a few verses. It says, So setting sail from Troas, we made a direct voyage to Samothrace, and the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia, and a Roman colony. Now, Philippi is going to sound familiar because of the book of Philippians, right? as Paul writes to the church in Philippi later on. And we remained in the city some days. And on the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate to the riverside, where we were, where we were supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who had come together. Now, this is interesting. I just learned that the reason they go outside the gate to find a place to pray is that in the city of Philippi, there was a prohibition against bringing an unrecognized religion into the city. So whatever that city decided was okay, that was it. And anything else, including Christianity, was not okay. So Paul and his companions, they had to pray outside the city. So that's why they're there. But God uses that prohibition to bring an opportunity for them to meet these ladies, especially one in particular. Verse 14, One who heard us was a woman named Lydia from the city of Thyatira, a seller of purple goods who was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul. And after she was baptized and her household as well, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, Come to my house and stay. And she prevailed upon us. 
Now, just this conversation with Lydia, and, and Jesus shows this as well, uh, sometimes these conversations with women in this day were looked down upon or they were overlooked, that no barriers prevent Paul from sharing the gospel, okay? And, and same with Jesus. And what happens is Lydia believes, which is incredible, and she's the first documented convert in this area, but then she invites them to have a place to stay. And she insists so much because she wants to respond to the gospel and these words that she's heard, she insists they, they come stay with her. But this isn't the only time. If you fast forward to verse 40, near the end of this chapter, after Paul and his companions have been through some really tough stuff, they go and stay there just to recharge. So a few things about Lydia. She was a dealer in purple cloth. So we know that was something that was more expensive and she would have had some wealth. Okay, didn't mean she was necessarily extraordinarily wealthy, but she had the means to host them and she had a place to host them. She was known for her hospitality and that's what I wanna talk about today. Um, when these missionaries are going through some tough stuff at the end of this chapter, um, it was almost a necessity for them to stay there and recharge. They had been in prison. They'd been fighting for their rights. They were hurting physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And they, they all kind of agreed, let's, let's go stay with Lydia. That's how hospitable she was. And so it gave them a safe place. It gave them a place to recharge. And that's underrated a lot of times, isn't it? Hospitality is really underrated sometimes. That word hospitality not surprisingly, is related to hospital. So what is a hospital? It's a place away from your home that brings healing and wholeness. That's what hospitality does too. So it's kind of a lost art sometimes. You know, I was talking to my chiropractor a couple days ago, and he's, he was asking me about our move when we, we just moved in. And, and he said when he moved into his neighborhood, he and his wife, he said nobody even said hi, nothing and they thought it was kind of strange. So when a neighbor down the road moved in, they baked something, they went down there, they introduced themselves, they gave it to them, and, and he said that, that those people, those neighbors looked at them like they were aliens. And so it, it seems like it's a lost art. Now, in our neighborhood, that's not been our experience. We've had a lot of people come say hi, introduce themselves. Uh, someone from down the street baked us brownies the other day, and they're already gone, they were really good. That was incredible, that, that hospitality, is a lost art sometimes and underrated in the way that it boosts people, that it recharges people. And obviously, in a time of quarantine, it's harder to do that, right? It's harder to, to host people, but there's still a lot of practical ways that we can show hospitality to people. Um, obviously, welcoming new people is, is a huge way that you can do that, uh, whether that's your neighborhood or whether that's in church. If you see new people in church, chances are you're gonna see that. If you choose to come back to church uh, th this Sunday or, or soon, because we've, had, we've reached a lot of different people with online, so we have some new people joining church, uh, welcome them, show them that hospitality. Show them that, they, that you notice, right, that they're there and that they matter. That means a lot to people. Uh, you can, obviously some of you are gifted at making and bringing food to people, and that's a huge way that you can help people when they're stressed out, when they're going through hard times. It just shows that you care. And it especially means a lot for people who speak the love language of gifts. Okay, Some of you are, are gifts love language. That means a lot to people when you do that. Um, offering people a place to stay when it's appropriate. When I was a seminarian, when I was studying at Concordia Seminary in St. Louis, I had to go down for a few intensive weeks each year, and then the rest I was able to do here online. But when I went down, I had a family that hosted me, and that not only saved me a lot of money that helped me in my seminary education, but it was a comfort to me, right, knowing that I had a place to stay and people that I knew, and it, it gave me some peace while I was there, it helped me just focus on studying. Not only did they give me a place to stay, they fed me every night, every morning, gave me food to take with, uh, they had activities planned in the evenings. It was incredible, right? And that, that helped me get through seminary. So the hospitality meant a lot to me. Um, so there's a lot of ways that we can show it. And we know that it's very 
near and dear to the heart of God as well. You know, Jesus tells his disciples in John 14, 3, he says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And of course, the disciples aren't quite understanding what's going on. And he's talking about that eternal home. And they, they ask him, well, Lord, how, how do we know how to get there? If you're going to prepare a place for us, he's like, I'm going to show you the, the way. I'm going to take you there. And so that hospitality is near to the heart of God where he's not only got a place that brings us healing and wholeness and a place that we can't even possibly imagine right now, but he's going to usher us there and bring us that peace and comfort along the way. And he's preparing a place for us as well. So we respond to that by showing hospitality in all the ways that we can. With that, let's pray. Lord, we're thankful for this place that we can gather together online and focus on you, set our hearts on you, learn about you. Lord, we're thankful for scripture, the way you speak to us through your word. And we're thankful for the way that you provided for your missionaries in the book of Acts through Lydia. Lord, let us be shaped informed by that example as we show hospitality to others that you're calling us to do as we know that you're also preparing a place for us we pray all this in jesus name amen all right thanks everybody for joining us this morning we'll be live again tomorrow morning for the rest of the week and then this coming sunday is the first sunday that we'll have open worship services, but for those who are not comfortable or those who choose to stay home will also be live at nine o'clock. So there's that option as well. God's blessings, everybody. Have a great day. We'll be in touch soon.